Do you ever catch yourself like this? Or... And according to the internet, I'm not alone. This month, I'm determined to fix my crappy posture from sitting at a desk eight hours a day and the remaining hours in the day staring down at my phone, which I hope will get rid of these constant tension headaches I'm having and avoid the evolutionary path I'm on to turn into Gollum. Here's my before photo. I will say, it is very hard to get a true photo of your before posture because just when I said posture, what did you do? You stood up straight, yes. So I did my best to just boom, stand there, and this is what we're dealing with. Here's my game plan. I'm gonna be doing four resistance training sessions a week with posture correcting exercises, mobility exercises I've seen from physiotherapists, plus just try and mindfully stand better, and, and I should probably fix my desk set up. So here's my day number one. I'm working from home, so I'm gonna film myself. I do have a standing desk, which does help with posture a lot, but I'm gonna film myself working to see how my posture kind of naturally changes throughout the day. And then we'll see at the end of this challenge. Day number two, and two things have helped me with posture, increasing mobility and strengthening weak muscles. The first two days, I was just getting back in the groove of doing my usual mobility and stretching routines, plus some exercises I know help with weaker muscles. And I am reminded after taking some time off how much weaker these weaker muscles have gotten. First two days, I was just getting back in the habit of training for posture, just showing up every day. But now I know if I actually wanna see results, I have to be consistently doing exercises that will get me there. So I built out a 30 minute routine. I don't know about you guys, but the last month, my whole For You page and Instagram newsfeed have become physiotherapists recommending exercises. Is this just a me weird thing or is this anyone else? <laughs> But I noticed reoccurring exercises that my past physios and trainers have also recommended, so I compiled them all into four parts. One, mobility warm up. Two, active mobility. Three, strengthening and weights. Four, stretching. I will do each of those four categories. I'll do about three exercises in, and I'll be doing them four times a week with a slight variation between days. Think push, pull, focus days. So what is perfect posture? According to Harvard Medical, it's your chin parallel to the floor, shoulders even, neutral spine, arms at your side, abdominal muscles braced, hips even, knees even and pointing straight ahead, body weight distributed evenly on both feet. Also a disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional or a physiotherapist. This is just me documenting my own journey and what worked for me. This is not meant to diagnose or provide medical advice. These are simple things you can find on Google or advice I've been giving from a therapist. Please do your own due diligence. We're just over halfway of week one and great news, no tension headaches. Whenever I'm consistently doing this stuff, it's no tension headaches, it's so simple. But right now I feel good. So I'm like, ah, oh, you're good. And then I lay off it and then they come back and it's a cycle, so it's consistency. Just catch me right now. I'm frozen to how I'm normally standing. That, that's the thing. This booty is a lot stronger than this booty. I think we just think of like this or like this, but we don't think about this because this is why I have issues running because she's weaker because I was a basketball player so and volleyball. So I spent my whole life like this. So now I'm trying to unweave. I feel good. Rest day. So I'm not at the gym. Just had a lovely hot girl walk. Day number six of the posture challenge and I'm realizing my biggest mission for this challenge and I'll know I've done it is if I don't stay at the ground when I walk. I had this realization the other day of when I walk, I walk like this and that's probably not helping the pain in my neck. With it is a safety thing. Sometimes there's things on the ground, but like everyone's wild to look up. I'm like, whoa. Like I was walking downtown in Sweden a couple weeks ago and I looked up and I've walked this road a thousand times. I just looked up, I was like, I didn't know that building looked like that. And I'm not staring, I'm just staring at the ground. And I don't like the energy that gives. Like it, it's very like, oh. I have lived my whole life thinking everyone hates me and I'm in the way and I'm a burden. I just always feel a burden. I always assume people hate me, that I'm in the way. And I'm, I'm just trying to not think that way. My goal is to walk with good posture, straight, confident, and head up. And that'd be my default. Like, it doesn't feel like I'm an actor. It doesn't feel like, oh, look how prim and proper I am and I walk so elegantly looking up. I, I just I just hope I stand where I look forward. The ground ain't that exciting. So far, it hasn't happened. If I had to define perfect posture, my mind instantly goes to a ballerina. So I figured what better way to test my posture than try and ballet for the first time. And this was so cool. 
because it's one thing to stand with good posture, but listening to my ballet teachers gave me such good cues on how to really get that mind muscle connection and how to move with posture, not just stand with posture. And oh my God, was it so hard, but at the same time, incredibly educational. Well, if I'm gonna be in Stockholm for two more days, I may as well treat myself and take a reformer's Pilates class because I sadly do not have access to them when living in Sunsol, and they're usually my go-to in Vancouver for posture correction, strengthening. So you know what? I'm just having a little me self-care day and get in my Pilates girl moment in. It's crazy how sometimes working harder makes you feel better. Like my, I haven't had any tension headaches. My lower back hasn't been hurting, even though like I'm doing more. <laughs> sometimes I think like you just have to stretch and mobility, but you also have to strengthen and I'm feeling so halfway through this challenge and I showed you guys my 6 a.m. gym routine which really shows a bit more of the specifics of this posture correction I'm doing and it just feels really good I'm back into the groove once again. Like I, I've gone through ebbs and flows of focusing on posture, but it's just so unsexy. Like I'll do it for a bit, I'll feel better. Then because I feel better, I fall off. I'm like, no, I'm determined to just get this as a part of my daily routine for as long as I possibly can. And the payoffs are always, it, it's such a small thing, but it just ripples in so many areas. Because I'm standing up straighter, I feel more confident. Because I'm feeling more confident, I'm more likely to go after those things I wanna do. So posture is one of those simple things is so important even though it feels so small like i physically feel better i mentally feel better and i think i almost feel more respected does that sound crazy to say okay i'm just blindly walking into screen and seeing where my posture is at this is just me <laughs> do you see a difference but we're about to do the biggest challenge Sadly, I just had a family emergency and I have to fly back to um, Canada in two days. It's not gonna be a pretty flight back. And nothing gives me worse tension headaches. This will be interesting. Now, obviously this is gonna set me back a little bit these couple days, maybe in the airport or on the airplane, I'll try and get up to a few stretches and stuff. And we'll see if I've got good posture in the plane or tech neck and give myself crippling headaches. Hour one on the train feeling good. First flight, hour 12 feeling eh, and by hour 26 on my second flight, the tension, headache, and back pain came in hard. This has got me doing further research and I stumbled across this Jeff Nippard video and one point he made was that we shouldn't fear bad posture as much as we do when it comes to back pain. It seems to be less about bad posture and a bit more about the lack of shifting between postures. This explains why my attempt to sit up straight the entire flight didn't help, and if anything made it worse. I'd have been better off simply trying to switch positions every 20 to 30 minutes. Now, speaking of walking with confidence, if there's one thing that will get rid of that and just make you go like this, it's having no energy. Here's Kelty's hack for what causes me to have no energy. Number one, not working out. When I'm not in my workout group, my energy dies. So obviously you can overtrain, but when I undertrain, also lack energy. Two, I don't get over seven hours of sleep. Energy, pfft. I work too much in the sense of like, I've noticed I get the most energy if I only work for 90 to 120 minutes, take a little breather, go outside, get some fresh air and start again. Versus if I push past that 120 minute route, my energy starts to dip and I get resentful and I get into this slump. Now my Andrew Huber and watching girlies, I bet you you're thinking, no caffeine right when you wake up, waiting 90 minutes. Personally, I've never tested that, so I wouldn't know. And the last that has actually given me so much energy, I don't need as many energy drinks, and this has been my swap whenever I am able to give up energy drinks. Being hydrated, and specifically, enough electrolytes. I used to have these weird dips in the middle of the day. I used to get debilitating calf, calf cramps. Well, here's proof that I use it, this one's empty. <laughs> When I start getting enough electrolytes, it got rid of my cramps. If I'm hungover, it gets rid of my headaches. Just normally, lots of times in the day, if I have a headache, it's just I haven't had enough sodium and enough electrolytes specifically. I love Element personally because it has the perfect scientific ratio for electrolytes. 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. It's used by highest level of athletes in the NBA, NHL, NFL. And I, I don't think I talk about this enough, it tastes so good. My favorite flavors are orange, citrus, and chocolate. It tastes like a salted hot cocoa and just, mm, 
Mmm, I crave it. Of course I got a deal for you guys. If you click the link down below and go to drinkelements.com slash Kelty, you will get a sample pack with your purchase. That's a great way to try all eight flavors or share with a salty friend. Once again, that's drinkelementy.com slash Kelty. Thank you, Element, for sponsoring this video. And literally, I've had every day for over a year and I just am obsessed. Okay, as I near the end of this challenge, there's five main lessons slash tips I've learned on the way. Number one, strengthen, not just stretch. Okay, so I'm at Mild Detox. So I just had a Mild Detox, which is like a sports massage. I tried my best to stretch during the flight, but I wasn't perfect and definitely had this tension headache. So I asked him, let's really get to the root of it. He said, your right trap is definitely a lot tighter. Makes sense to play basketball. And I was like, is it because something's weak? or something's tight and not mobile. And he's like, for you, it's most likely a week or back. So my goal the next two weeks, he gave me some exercises, is to add in a lot more back workouts. I do do back workouts, but like not as much as I should. It's been a big lesson. I've talked about this over the last year or so. It's not just when something's tight, it can be tight because it's not mobile, but it can also be tight because a different muscle is underdeveloped. So it's pulling at it. So that is a big lesson. Number two, computer setup. Let's open it. Whoa. I've dreamed of having an Apple desktop since I don't even know. I don't remember a time I didn't dream of having one. Oh, Steve Jobs. So after 10 years of video editing, four years of music production, I finally convinced myself, hey, Kelty, maybe you do deserve to treat yourself and get an actual monitor. And I finally splurged. But I'm one of those people that if I can't get my absolute dream product, I will just live without it. I've dreamed of having an Apple desktop or a Apple like monitor. I, I haven't even bought the desktop yet for my whole life. And I said, I'm not buying one till, till I save up for this one. And it took me a literal decade. <laughs> I have this theory that Apple has a weird chokehold on 90s kids. At least for me, the iPod was released during my formative years. And so Apple has become too much of my personality that I was like, I will live in pain for five years, refusing to buy any other monitor till I save up to the Apple one. Like what logic? It's a product. That being said, here's a little tip for you girlies about having an ergonomic desktop set up from a non-tech bro. First, the position of your monitor. Someone like me who has to do very detailed things. Video editing and music production. It's very small little details. I'm constantly zooming in and cutting. So I need a big screen. Some of you guys might not if you're just doing regular Excel, Word documents, emails, you could probably be fine with a laptop. But what my first investment was getting just a laptop stand because you just don't wanna be looking down. That's what caused me a lot of strain. You don't wanna to be too close and you don't wanna be looking down. So try and have your laptop at least at eye level. There's even some people who say raise a little bit above, but just, just try not to look down. And that's why I needed a big setup because the fine details, I just slowly got closer and closer and closer to my laptop till I was pretty much making out with it every day. And that's what caused eye strain and neck strain. Second, I got a standing desk, but it's not the actual standing that I find beneficial. For me, when I sit, I'm too lazy to get up. And I will sit in that same position, even if I have to hold my pee for eight hours of the day and I won't get, I, I just won't get up. When I'm on a standing desk, I don't have that, oh, I gotta get up. I just will naturally move more in the sense it's normally me every 20 minutes. Laura, Laura, go drink some water. In reality, every like 20 minutes, I just need a dopamine hit, but it gets me up off my desk and it's usually a sparkling water. And I got an ergonomic net mouse a little while back. That has definitely helped my hand cramps. Actually, I'm gonna show some other people in the office's ergonomic chair setups. Derek went the route of more of a gamer chair that's got all these pillows and all these and cushions. So this is his setup. And then JJ actually has a medicine ball on wheels so he can kind of bounce around on. And then we got these chairs just because they seem to be at a good angle and we could have our feet flat on the ground for whenever we sit at the table. See, I'm no expert, but there's multiple different ways. It's about what works for you. For me, it was standing desk, ergonomic mouse, 
having my computer screen at the right angle and a big enough screen to look at. But I wanna do a bit of de-influencing. You don't need this. You don't need this Apple Studio screen. There's way more affordable ones by Dell and HP. Just literally go on Google and type affordable quality computer monitors. You just plug it right into your laptop. You get a bigger screen for like $100, $200. You can easily find those. The only difference this is gonna give you is like better color. Like you're gonna get a depth of range. You see so many colors. Most people will not notice the difference. You know who this matters for? YouTubers, graphic designers. So save your money. There's other Macs even you get. Just don't see this and be like, oh my God, I need to get it. It's not worth your money. I feel I can justify it because I gotta edit videos and make sure they're good coloring for you to watch so you enjoy on your 4K TV or overly expensive iPhone. But for the vast majority of people who aren't YouTube video editors or graphic designers, this, this is a complete waste of your money. You're just paying for that stupid apple at the back that has a chokehold on me. But I'm willing to do it so I get better quality content for you guys to tell you to not buy this stupid thing. <laughs> yeah, I think we all have this issue right now and I it put it off for so long. The ergonomics of setting up your computer. Because it's extra money and I don't wanna pay, but then when I'm in chronic pain and have to take sick days because my back and brain hurt, I'm realizing the importance of the angles of your computer and staring hunched over at my little computer screen was just causing me massive tension and like that's eight hours of my day hunched over like that. Number three, where it hurts might not be the problem. The two main areas that always hurt the most and cause me the most pain, my head, left side of my head, the right lower back. So what I would do, I would massage those and massage those and I just think of everything. It turns out I talked to professionals. My headache was primarily weak rhomboids. So the middle part of my back is weak. So my trap on my left side overcompensates, works all the way up. So sometimes your posture, where you might be hunching over or what's hurting might not be the issue for tech neck. Now, I don't really know how to master this. I think it's something we just have to be more mindful of. If you're anything like me, you text like this. If you catch me walking down the street, I'm looking down like this. I'm at the gym on a treadmill. This. Tech neck, I'm gonna get wrinkles. I got pain in my back. And does it, this, this is so unflattering. Now I get it. This, what I'm about to do looks lame as AF, but maybe if we all start doing it, a little less this. It's dramatic. How much better you feel when you just hold it in front of you. Yeah, if you're walking down the street, I guess we really shouldn't be texting and walking. But let's all try and phone down here, phone straight in front. And the fifth, maybe put a reminder on your phone, just like constantly reminding yourself to walk straight, walk with confidence. And I've done a couple of things. I just have like a couple go-to songs when I'm going on walk. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start with these because I walk just with a little bit more power. I'm gonna put the link in the description down to the playlist I've been listening to that's Walking Tunes 2024 for Spotify if you just want a little pep in your step. I've put reminders on my phone. I think the more you remember, the more it becomes second nature because I think that's like half of building a habit, especially something like this where I already am so grained to walk like this with good posture. I just feel more confident, like I feel more Proud of myself. The final days I really concentrated on shifting posture every 20-ish minutes while working, getting in some back strengthening exercises like rows, deadlifts, chin-ups, along with still doing push movements and things to strengthen my core and glutes. And as funny as it sounds, putting a little effort to dress up in a way I feel confident every day. So it's been 30 days of fully concentrating on getting my posture in the best of it can be. Let's go see my results. Once again, this is a hard thing to test because I kind of just have to like not think about it. I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna stand. We're gonna see how I stand. Okay, so now here's gonna be me, me trying to stand. Like I'm, you know, there's a cute boy I just ran into named Magnus over in the corner. And I was like, ooh, let's stand up tall. How would I stand? Let's go see these results. I just pulled this up on the screen and looked at my before and after. Unfortunately, I'm not wearing the same thing, so bear with me. But if you look at my shoulders, how much more open they are there, like they're just less rounded. And I just feel I have a little bit less of my gut stick out. And the side, like I can just definitely see my neck position is a bit better. It's not perfect, but I am a bit more up straight. There's less of a curve in my lower back. I feel my arms are more pulled back. Oh! And I haven't had a tension headache. I haven't had lower back pain since I've started doing that. And that is worth it in itself. And I feel the last month I've really tried to walk with my head up straight and not down at my feet. And I'm catching myself more often doing it. And the way I know I am is I've noticed new things about my city. I walk the same path pretty much every day and it looks completely different. And I just feel a bit more confident. I feel 
better. And I feel when I do do that, I want to put in the work. I want to show up for myself a bit more every day. And posture is such a funny thing because it's how people treat you. But I just feel I'm being a better community person. I'm staring up, I'm making eye contact with people more. I'm doing things I want to be doing a bit more and it's not just posture, but it, it's just the whole of everything. I definitely did not work on strengthening my middle back enough. And that's something that's very weak. I think just, I don't know what it is. I think swimming, everything I was very like pull. I didn't, do you know what I mean? Like I was very this movement, basketball's like this, swimming's like this, volleyball's like this. I didn't, I didn't do a lot of this growing up. So that, that actually makes sense. Those are my tips. Obviously your posture could be a bit different, but do a little research from your own sports background. If you're hunched over at a desk, maybe if, if you're someone who's constantly trying new programs and buying this and buying that online, I'd like save your money this month, maybe go get a physio and just ask what muscles are weak, what are tight, and what are some exercises you could use to help that. And I'm gonna leave you with one last thing. Debbie, stand up a little straighter. <laughs> Let's all do it. Cause you deserve, you deserve to walk with confidence, feel good about yourself so you can show up as the best version of yourself cause you wanna enjoy your life more. It's all about enjoying life more, finding that balance between today working towards tomorrow. And it's, I, I think it's an underappreciated thing, posture. Like it's such a physical manifestation of your own mental health in a way. Maybe that's why I think it's so important because it's kind of a crossroads. When my mental health isn't good, I'm very, and when I'm good, you stand up. You wanna look up the sky and the, see the joy of the birds chirping. Oh God, that's cheesy. Have a great day, go pet a dog. Love you guys, bye.